Keith Hackett and Roger Dilks are in residence, so joining me for The Ref Show. Welcome to the programme. We've got plenty to look back on. Excellent performances in the main, mm. perhaps, from referees mm. over the weekend. But let's start with the big games, the big uh, Sunday games, which produced a mixture, I think, as far as officiating was concerned. Anthony Taylor had the, the biggest game, biggest cherry. Chelsea beating Manchester United 1-0. I think we can probably move on straight away, Roger. Yeah. Can we? Yeah. Absolutely. I thought um, a lot of pressure on the boy. We know where he lives. We've said it many times before. And they send him all the way to London in the big game. And he was excellent. End he was. Of, end of. Yeah. I mean, I mean, let's just dwell a little bit. Yeah. Because, you know, the foundation of any performance is speed and, and basic contact with play, reading and anticipating. Yeah. Yeah. And I sat there and I'm thinking, you've come on. As a referee, he's yeah. growing yeah. in confidence. You know, uh, it, I think we're looking for a, an elite referee uh, in UEFA to, you know, for us to be re represented at the moment. He's ahead of everybody. He's, he is, he's so yeah. they ought, hopefully he'll become an elite referee. Yeah. And he's managed to park this Manchester resident fee. Uh, this enormous obstacle yeah. every time he referees a Manchester club, which he does, he does. quite regularly. He does. And, and it never gets mentioned now. No. Well, part, we've mentioned it, but yeah. generally it doesn't. That's a great tribute to him. Well, I think the tribute mm. is the fact of his impartiality and mm. his consistency mm. of, of good performances. Beyond reproach. Uh, you know, for me, I still think he's fraught with danger if it really does turn turtle and, and he, he puts in a poor shift. There's always that danger being in the local proximity of the yeah, club yeah, there is. that some idiot gets hold of you. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's the fear. Mm. OK, but Anthony Taylor, excellent. Let's go to the other Manchester club. This was the other really big game of the weekend. Manchester City 3, Arsenal 1. Now, this did produce many talking points. Michael Oliver was in the centre of them. Uh, Arsene Wenger, predictably, didn't hold back afterwards about a couple of calls. One of which I think you guys agree that he was right on, the penalty for the, 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 the award of the third goal, which was offside. But the first goal, big talking point, a penalty was awarded. Arsene Wenger wasn't happy about this. Now, first of all, was the penalty award correct, Keith? Oh, it was a foul. Hmm. No question it was a foul. Therefore, it had to be a penalty kick. So let us park that one and say he got that absolutely correct. Hmm. However, having awarded the penalty kick, he seems to have forgotten that the question, is this denial of an obvious goal-scoring opportunity? Yes. And it is a clear denial of an obvious goal-scoring yes. opportunity. So the Arsenal player should have been dismissed. I yes. have no hesitation in saying that. The attacking def the defender the, in, in closest proximity, if you like the spare one, yeah. was outside the penalty area, would have had no influence on the shot on goal. Yeah, so Monreal of Arsenal should have been sent off besides a correct penalty award and yet we had Arsene Wenger afterwards, you know, very angry about, about the award. It could have been, should have been worse for Arsenal and Wenger than it was. Well, I, I'd, I'd just like to come in because I think that, you know, in the build-up to this, this uh, decision yeah. was a major error that, again, was, not, was overlooked. And that was the award of a free kick for an alleged foul on Silver yep. mm. when no offence had <coughs> taken place. Right. You know, so the basis of refereeing, if you want to be at any level, park level or elite level, yeah. is you've got to determine, is it a foul, is it not a foul? And yeah. You've got to more often than not be right with those. Where, were, where are we with Wenger's comments, though, though Roger? It was a scathing of, uh, of the referee. Uh, I know Keith has agreed with him on a general point about referee standards generally, but appearing to indicate that Raheem Sterling dived. Mm. I mean, this is a bit dangerous a comment. Well, he, he's entering dangerous ground and he's given the Football Association an opportunity. Um, mm. I think from his point of view, he's obviously trying to deflect mm. criticism for his players. And, and he's good at it. He's mm. good at it. But possibly on this occasion, he's overstepped the mark. Although on the third goal, as you both agree, he was right. You know, Absolutely. that should have been ruled out for us. And, and he's, I mean, look, he, better than any of us, knows the tactics that's been employed, the game and how it's flowing. Uh, and it was a critical decision. I mean, often people say the critical decision is is uh, the goal mm. uh, that wins the game. But often in the build-up, it is the goals that 
should not be awarded that are okay. that create the problem. Funnily enough, in the championship uh, a few days ago, I saw a Mid Middlesbrough play at Hull and a Middlesbrough penalty was awarded and it was a clear dog so. Okay, the referee only shows a yellow card to the offender, but they get it right in the end because I think the assistant called him over. Mm -hmm. They go over, have a chat, and he changes the yellow to, to, to a red. It's in the area, obviously, yeah. but it's not an attempt to, to, to win the ball fairly. So no. The difficulty you know. for the referees is that dogs are doesn't happen every day. No. So they've got to have parked in their brain up here the fact that when they're awarding a penalty kick or a foul, when someone's moving to goal, they've got to ask the question mm. every time, yeah. where, where am I with dogs over? Yeah. And of course, I think that added to that confusion is this additional, if you like, workload that they put on the referee that says, has he challenged for the ball? The ball. If yeah. that defender has challenged for the ball, then it is a yellow card. A lot to think yeah. about. Mm. I, think, I think the other thing, just on that point, Keith and I are fronting a webinar on Wednesday evening this week. Okay. For our um, academy members. And th so at this point, let's mention that the, the <coughs> URL, the Ref Academy site, is a unique opportunity mm. for young referees to interact with mm. very experienced former, former referees on any problems or any queries that they have, and it's yeah. highly to be, to be recommended. Kevin Friend's game, Spurs 1, Crystal Palace nil was pretty mm. incident-free. Uh, let's talk about Graham Scott, though. Uh, another dramatic game on, on the Sunday. Everton 3, Watford 2. Frantic, a dramatic game. Amazing finish. Two penalties awarded late on. One was missed. I mean, that's big pressure for a referee, isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, Tight ground, the yeah. crowd are on you. You know, difficult ground to referee at. I, I think this referee is fairly solid. Mm. Um, I, I think he's got stature for sure. Mm. Size gives him that. He looks confident. Uh, and I think the great thing is, and, and you know, sometimes I'm very critical of the PGML, as you know, but I think on this occasion, I looked at the technical area yeah. and holding the board up was Martin Atkinson. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking, if I was a young referee wanting to develop my career, yeah. and I've got Martin Atkinson on the communication system, yeah. I'd be more than happy. Yeah. Um, and, I th and I think the fact is that he's gone through another game. Yes, he's had incidents. He's not a young referee, though, is no, he? He's not. No, he's, he's not. not. He should he's be getting not. more games, shouldn't he? Well, <laughs> I mean, they all, they all, uh, you know, Wenger's comment, <clears throat> and we've been saying it, haven't we, for a two or three years now, that the standard of refereeing is declining. It's going it, to, it has declined by the very nature that somehow they didn't hold on to Howard Webb and Mark Clattenburg and Mark Elsey. Yeah. And the reality is, if you're going to lose people of that stature, world-class referees, you're going to suffer if you're not working at building them. Mm. And of course, the biggest error they made is the coaching standards that I left at a fairly high level are now almost non-existent. I mean, mm. they, they're disposed of the services of Roger, Rob Harris, who are all with us, and it's yeah. great for yeah. them to be with the UR, the ref team. But they're not there advising the referees at that level yeah. and building their confidence. Look, most referees come off the game and they're looking at the negative sides Worse. of their performance. Right. And that's when someone with Roger's experience would be able to say, look, it's not as bad as you no, think. No. Well, let's just move on with the roundup. Yeah. Uh, Neil Swarbrick, uh, highly rated on this, this show well, regularly. West Ham won Liverpool solid. four, and a very impressed Delivering, Mark Halsey yeah. on ref cam. Yeah. Yeah. Delivering. Let's just talk about a, another form of delivery. And I, I wear this in tribute, this uh, well, closest thing I can get to a Huddersfield Town shirt, in tribute to the Terriers. Uh, tenth in the Premier League. Uh, Huddersfield won West Brom nil, uh, sending off a Christoph Schindler, two yellow cards. Don't think that was really contested. No. Um, Roger East was in charge, but 10th, and you're a former player. Absolutely. You were formerly on Huddersfield's yeah. books, Roger yeah, Dilts. Yeah. yeah, when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, seeing Huddersfield in the Premier League and they sit in 10th. That's uh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Absolutely. I mean, but he's you, got he's got him playing. He's got Wagner's got him playing. They're working hard for each other, and um, you know, I'm I'm convinced they'll they'll surprise a few more yet. Yeah, you you too, Keith. I think yeah. uh, I think of the clubs that I used to visit as one of the most friendliest clubs you could ever visit. Absolutely. From chairman right the way through. Uh, 
a lot of my times were at the old ground. Yeah, Leeds Road. Uh, Leeds which Road, yeah. was yeah. a yeah. terrific atmosphere and a lot of history with it. Mm. Shankly and many yeah. others. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's fantastic. I, I, this cool. guy, the manager, talks a great deal of sense. He does. And I think part of being a manager is organisation. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's good at. And yeah. a tribute to Dean Hoyle and a bit of humble pie uh, eaten by a certain journalist who tweeted around the time that Chris Powell was sacked a couple of years ago that it was harsh. Yeah, I agree, it was still it was harsh. And that Huddersfield were sort of uh, overachieving at that time. <laughs> I've been reminded on that on Twitter. I do humbly say that that was totally incorrect. I am <laughs> delighted to say. Uh, join us for Ref Show Part 2 with a talking point or two still to cover in that Huddersfield game, the rest of the Premier League, the Championship and the FA Cup. Plenty to come.